when you work with a piece of software for hours at a time, and I spend hours in, in Lightwave, uh, you might decide that you want to customize the appearance. Um, say you don't really like the gray on gray, and and uh, you don't need the, the little title bars here because you never use them and you could use that space um, or you know say you don't really need this grid usually I don't like working with the grid well you can go in and customize your workspace and I thought we could take a look at uh, how we can go about doing that and uh, and jump right in so the easiest way to go about and start custom customizing your viewport is your viewports uh, is to hit D for display options Okay. which is the same as going over to the edit drop down and choosing display options and the f first thing we see is we could change our the, now there are presets uh, but we could change our layout right now we're in the quad view I could change it to single view double vertical for the most part I like working with quad view okay I like having my top back side and perspective view so I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. Knowing that at any time I can jump with my little widget, I can jump into to one window, and I do that quite often. So D for display options. You can change your perspective amount. I usually, for, for the type of work that I like to do, I usually take my perspective amount and shove it all the way over to the left. I don't, I don't want the perspective. Um, sometimes that throws off uh, what my model actually looks like. So I always drop my perspective amount all the way down. Uh, I believe by default it'll be somewhere in here, uh, and I would rather just have it all the way over. The background color is something that, that I change uh, uh, almost instantly uh, to something other than gray. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and click that. And you can choose any color you want. I like staying kind of in the muted color range. Um, and I kind of change it up from time to time. Uh, I'm just going to try uh, this for right now. So, but you can pick any color you want. And as you can see, now we've got um, an RGB value in there other than the, the gray tones that we had. Okay. The default sketch color uh, is always going to be dark blue unless you change it so that when you draw out new geometry, uh, you can... Uh, you can change it so that the wireframes are going to be something other than, than dark blue. I'm going to leave mine dark blue. You can change the point, edge, polygon, uh, selection color, uh, the tool color. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and change mine to uh, points. I'm going to change those to a red color. Uh, uh, edges, I'm going to change to a green color. And I like leaving my uh, polygon selection color yellow. The tool color, I'm fine with it being light blue. That's uh, referring to when you start to use a tool, you get that light blue color. It doesn't have to be. And see my default sketch color is dark blue. Okay. If I select the point, it's red. If I select the edge, it's green. If I select the poly, it's yellow. I like changing those colors because if I were to select uh, all four edges, kind of looks like the polygon selected, but I know that edges are green. And in order for the poly to be selected, they need to be yellow. So that's one reason why you might want to go in and change that. Okay. So uh, if we come down into this area, these are global settings for all the windows, Okay, for all the viewports. So do I want to show the points? Well, yeah, I kind of want to be able to see the points, but some people don't want to. So you can turn that off. Show surfaces. If you don't want to show surfaces, show origin. Okay, that's the heavy black line on the grid. What I us usually do is turn off the grid, see, but I leave the origin lines. If I turn those off, you can see now I don't even know where I'm at in 3D space. And because I like to model on the, um, I like to model with symmetry, uh, I like to know where my origin is so that I know what's going to happen and where each side is. But you can turn that off. I'm going to leave mine on, but I'm going to leave the grid off. You can uh, show, another one that I like to remove is show cages. If I turn this into a sub patch object by hitting the tab key, I don't need the cages. Um, I think they actually get in the way, but some people when they're learning how to use sub patches like to leave it so that they can see what the actual uh, mesh looks like. But I turn that off. And you see these little uh, lines right here that's connecting the point to uh, the subpatch? Uh, that's a guide. I like to turn that off too. 
So I leave that off. I really like to show normals. That allows me to determine, let me um, just select a, a polygon, and I can put my normals back to, to normal. Okay, that allows me to know is in wireframe mode, is my polygon facing this way or this way? Okay, so I like showing normals. Uh, you can show point selection if you I like to see what points I have selected, but sometimes um, the point selection gets in the way. You can turn that off. Okay. Uh, show backdrop. If you have a backdrop image in there, you can have it uh, not show up in that. So you've got some different selection options here, but remember that under the layout tab, these are global settings. It affects all the viewports. Okay. If I go over to the viewports tab, now I have top it says T-O-P-L, that's top left, top right, um, bottom left, and bottom right. Okay, And this can give you independent um, uh, display options, even though we've set global settings here. So what I could do is in the top right, um, I'm going to do independent visibility. And I'm going to say, I don't want to show the origin lines, but just in the perspective window. It's not going to affect these other windows. I can also say, well, you know what? I want to show um, I want to show guides and cages in the perspective window, but see, it's not going to show up in the other windows. Okay, but really, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't like using this. Okay, so I can also have. If you notice, it said independent rotation was already checked. That allowed me to rotate the object around uh, or my viewport around and not have it affect the other um, windows. If I do independent zoom. I can zoom in and out, and it's not going to zoom the other windows, okay? But I usually like to leave that uh, global, independent center. Um, so you have all these different options for customizing your, um, for, for your viewport area. You do the global settings in the layout tab. You can do independent settings per viewport here. There's a couple more things that I want to show uh, that kind of affect the, the viewport. And that's over in the interface tab. Now, uh, though this isn't the viewport, it kind of affects the viewport because it'll shift it over. If you don't want your toolbar, which is normally located on the left, you can always move it over to the right. Uh, and then your workspace has been shifted over. So uh, it does affect the viewport in that it, it does uh, move the viewport over. I'm going to put that back to the left because that's what I like. You can hide the toolbar, which gives you access to more space uh, for your viewport. You can even hide the viewport titles, which gives you even more space. Uh, but now you don't have the widgets and you don't have the drop down, so you have to use shortcut keys to uh, to work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those back on and unhide my toolbar. Okay, so we have um, the ability to go in and hide the viewport title bars right here, the toolbar to the left, and, uh, and we can also come back over to the viewports and layout tabs to customize our our interface here. So again, if you're going to be spending hours in front of uh, uh, in front of this interface, you should want to make it as comfortable for you as possible. And this is one way in Modeler to go about changing your default settings to um, to get it the way uh, you want it for when you're working.